I wish there was one team that was still playing mm -hmm. because then we get a chance to see this next man still play the football. And when this guy plays the football, he shows incredible flexibility with his celebration. Woo! His intensity is incredible. The fact that he's an avatar and he sits in lakes and works out out in the middle of nowhere is awesome. And he kicked his agents the fuck out of town <laughs> so he could get a deal done with the Pittsburgh Steelers. Ladies and gentlemen, Defensive Player of the Year, Defensive MVP candidate, TJ, why? 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 What's up, guys? Why? Thanks for having me why? on. Why? <laughs> why? Do you hear us do that? And how bad do you hate it? Every time we go, TJ, why? 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 I love it. I love right. it. Get the whole studio involved. Love the energy. Uh, well, we appreciate you a lot. Obviously, the season didn't end how you wanted it to. Uh, you guys are not in the playoffs. You had a hell of a year, though. Describe the season that was, because there was a couple times it felt like you guys were all the way out, fought, clawed your way into conversation, get in the wild card, and then eventually lose. How would you describe this past season, you think, TJ? A roller coaster of emotions. I think it, it was it was a lot of ups, a lot of downs. I mean, as the, the defensively as all I can really talk about is just um, never really being able to get into a groove. I mean, um, the year before we were 11-0, and 0, so we knew what it what it felt like to, to get on a run and win some games and then obviously fell apart towards the end. And um, this year started out good in Buffalo and then um, just could never really get our footing throughout the whole season. And um, to be able to win three of the last four and get into the playoffs was obviously a great feeling. Um, but the way that it ended uh, was was not good at all. Hey, TJ, when you like the tackles that you face on a regular basis, maybe tackles in your division or just guys you know you're going to play, do you, do you have like a, do you keep books on them? Do you take notes and realize like, okay, this is this guy's strengths? Like, how much do you study the tackles that you will go against? Yeah, I study a good amount. I mean, everything from um, just little things like snap count, um, when the quarterback's getting, um, when he's hiking the ball on the play clock, stuff like that. And you go to the tackles and, um, a lot of the times I'll always text my brother and say, Hey, I got this guy this week. Do you have any, do you have anything on him? How, how do you, how do you think he played you the last time? And, um, just little things like that, that can help me, um, when I go into a game, but I do a lot of individual study as well throughout the week, but, uh, tackles are smart, man. They play guys differently too. They know that we're watching the film. So it's tough. Now, outside of the Titans getting nine sacks on Joey Burrow and the Bengals still winning somehow, you know, and Vrabel <laughs> saying, like, yeah, maybe we had too many sacks. You know, I like turnovers. Maybe we get more turnovers and things like that. But if you look at, like, the Rams with Aaron Donald, Von Miller, and the boys, what they're able to do completely changes the game. And then the Niners and Bosa, what they were able to do to the Green Bay Packers. And they always talk about if your front can get pressure and then everybody else can kind of sit back in a shell, you're obviously way ahead of the game. Whenever you're talking about about trying to take out a TJ Watt or a Bosa or a Von Miller. What do you think like people try to do? Has there been any innovations or is it always just chip and let's hope we can help? What does that exactly mean? And when in games do you know that they're targeting you specifically? Yeah, I mean, it's definitely the chip. I mean, it just set, you have to figure out if it's going to be the tight end chip or the running back chip. I mean, there's been times this year where I think it was Denver specifically where I lined up on the left side of the ball, which where I primarily do. Um, the tight end came out off the ball and followed me over there. So I got up and went to the right side, and he got up and came over to me. And <laughs> still chipped me. So, um, I mean, it, it's tough to it's tough to get past two guys, uh, no matter which way they do it, if they're sliding or uh, whatnot. But definitely late in the games. I mean, you see yesterday when um, they have a got to have a situation. It's tough with those tight ends that are so active in the passing game. I think we have it with Mark Andrews um, in Baltimore, and then obviously you see with Kelsey yesterday. They don't really like to keep the tight ends in the chip when they're their primary receivers. So um, as a passer, you have to know that usually it's going to be that running back chip in those types of situations. Mm. What do you think about the Bengals and their chances now in the AFC Championship, obviously? And I know they're a much different team now than when you got into the league. Like, how, What's it like playing them now with Joe Burrow and all their weapons? And what kind of chance do you give them going forward? Yeah, I mean, the Bengals are a solid team. I mean, they beat us twice this year, and um, they've continued to improve since he's been there. And uh, just having a quarterback like that that can get the ball out quickly, they like to spread the ball out and make decisions um, pretty easy for them and um, see if you're in man or zone and pick you apart that way. And then, um, obviously, he has the, the running component too, which, I mean, again, you saw yesterday where if you're in man coverage and you try to eliminate those 
those routes, those those dangerous receivers, all he has to do is kind of tuck the ball and run if you're not very determined uh, in your rush lanes. For the guys that are left that are pass rushers, Trey Hendrickson's obviously in there making plays. And for the other teams, do you all keep in contact with each other? Do you watch film of the others? Do you expect that they watch film of you as well? Is that a whole community? You guys all on a group text like we're fucking dogs and unblockable? <laughs> Is that something you guys have? There's no group text or anything like that. I mean, <laughs> definitely um, mutual admiration for all the work that guys are putting in. I'm always watching the beat tapes. Uh, every week you watch the tackle and how he got beat the week before to see if that's something that you could, that's a move that you could use going into this game. And um, there's so many pass rushers that are just doing things at such a high level. I'm always trying to steal moves from guys. So um, any any moves that you guys see, I want to <laughs> Yeah, we'll clip them and send them to you. Before Tone Diggs has a question for you and the boys as well, hell of a season, obviously. Yeah. And you got paid, okay, which is cool. And there's some Yinzer folklore <laughs> that would make you a Yinzer superhero, if true. And I think we asked you before, but I don't know if you remember more of the details. Did you tell your agents to get their stupid fucking suits out of the way? I'm going to go sign to be a Steeler, and I would like everybody to know I'm going to fucking work out immediately <laughs> afterwards. Yeah. And what does it mean to be a Steeler, and why is that something, you think? Why does it mean something to be a Pittsburgh Steeler, you think? Yeah, it was something. It was one of those things where, I mean, in the in the process, it was so much back and forth. And that, towards the end, we got to a number we were very happy with. And um, they said, hey, we can go back one more time, and we think we can get – get X, Y, and Z. And they said, man, I'm, I'm sick and tired of going back and forth. Like, let me just go up there and, and just shake the guy's hand for saying, thank you for, for listening to us and offering what we, what we wanted and let's get this thing done. And I mean, it was like a Thursday. So I normally work out on a Thursday. I, oh, okay. <laughs> okay. I mean, it's not like it was, a, you know, it was like a Rocky Balboa. Like, oh, I got to go, I got to go work out right now. But it was just a normal day from there. And, um, Went home that night and um, was just had uh, dinner with my agent and just thanked him and um, just a real a surreal moment. But yeah, be, playing in Pittsburgh is. I told um, Mr. Rooney that this is this community and the people here, the blue collarness, and it, it just matches me and it matches my family and my beliefs. And uh, I love the people here. I love playing for Mr. Rooney, uh, Coach Tomlin, and it's it's just a great fit. And uh, if you're from here like you are, you know you know. Yeah, the whole place runs through the success of the Pittsburgh Steelers. The morale of the entire town goes through Sundays. And I'll tell you what, when we went and saw and you got introduced last as a young buck, it was Ooh. like, oh, of course, TJ is this place's fucking hero. I mean, that's the way it is. And you've shown up and continue to work. And I think they know that. And they see that. And they appreciate that. Go ahead, Diggs. First off, thank you, TJ. Thank you, Thank you, TJ. Thank you, TJ. 22 and a half. Tied the record, and I think about the one where Cam got a personal foul against the Ravens and the one where the, the botched snap against the Ravens, where that could have been another one. How much have you thought about the ones that didn't happen, that almost happened, that could have got the record by yourself? Well, a little bit, but not as much. I mean, because 22 and a half, I mean, I'm very happy with it. <laughs> I, I would have I would have definitely traded in a lot of those to be still playing right now. Yeah. Um, the number one thing that bothers me about it is everybody acts like it's a personal accolade. It's just myself. And um, there's so many sacks in there where, I mean, I think uh, a couple times where the quarterback just kind of uh, takes a coverage sack and I'm just the first guy to tap him down. So um, it's it's not just myself getting those those numbers for sure. What do you do? Pre-workout? A little smelling salts? Oh. You, what do you do before games? You you flip the switch and become a different animal, just like your brother, by the way. Your brother is like, uh, very nice to be here. Hey, how you doing, don't you know? And then they get a mic up, and he's like, maybe we're just fucking better than these goddamn bitches. You know, like, is there something that just, like, is there something in the, just, you flip a switch? How do you get it go to, you know, full what? Well, uh, on the field. Yeah, I think my dad always growing up, I, I remember if, like I didn't play well or something, he'd be like, man, you know, that, that it factor just wasn't there today. Like, you got to find that switch, man. So now, I mean, it's just, it's kind of built in, you know, it's, you work so hard, um, put so much into this all off season, all season, all week leading into a game that um, when the lights come on, it's just kind of the work is done. And I'm going to go out here and have as much fun as I possibly can because it's the best job in the world. So, um I'm sure pre-workout, a little bit of peppermint, essential oil under the nose to get the airway <laughs> opened up, and 
go out there and have a fun time. Oh, that's awesome to hear. Go ahead, Ty. TJ, how do you, I mean, obviously 22 and a half sacks, that's incredible. And, and you're always going to go to work every single day. Your work ethic obviously is well documented. How do you actually get better after having a year like that? Like, what will you do this off season to actually be better next year? Work on staying healthy. That was the big thing for me was not being able to play in every game this year, which was very frustrating. Uh, but there's always things from a leadership standpoint that I'm um, trying to continue to grow at. Obviously, if Seven's not in the building, there's going to be a void there. So um, we need to step up, and uh, me and Cam Hayward definitely are willing to step into that role. Yeah, cause... What's it like having Cam Hayward in there? Sorry, Pat. When, I, when you have Cam Hayward inside, he's such a monster, such a strong dude. Like You guys work together so well. Like How valuable is that to have a dude like him in there? Yeah, Cam's Mr. Reliable, man. He's been doing it at a high level. I don't think he gets the respect that he deserves. I mean, he's, I think he's got three first-team All-Pros in the last four years or something crazy like that. Um, I don't even remember the last game he's missed. Just just the guy that is, is so reliable. And OHIO, I didn't know if you're doing the big head. We call him head because he's got such a massive head. <laughs> I was but, doing the head. Yeah, that was for the head. But it did OHIO. Is that <laughs> Cam Hayward, by the way, when he was a kid, you know, just doing the OHIO. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Coach Tomlin always puts up like old high school pictures um, throughout the weeks through like training camp and stuff. And Cam Hayward in seventh grade looks like Cam Hayward right now. It's pretty cool. <laughs> he had 31 tackles probably in a game like that fucking big ass head that's on your left. Uh, the screen's right. Let's talk about Coach Tomlin. What, you know, in the middle of the season, Coach Tomlin had to answer questions about not taking the USC job. And he was disgusted by it. I will not take any more questions about something like that. I have the best coaching job in all of sports. What is it about Coach Tomlin, you think, that not only keeps him relatable with the players, but successful as well, even when it doesn't seem as if it should be the case? What is it about him behind closed doors that makes him the coach that he is? Uh, he always says he doesn't care where good ideas come from, and that's uh, something that he's taken to heart, and he always is open to listening to our opinions uh, on things. Um, just in my exit meeting um, a couple days ago, he asked me on what I think um, not only himself could do better, but um, just us in the facility, whether it's the the, um, the, the training staff, uh, the weight room, or the cafeteria, stuff like that. And then, I mean, I think it's just this transparency that guys really gravitate towards. He's not going to sugarcoat anything. He's going to tell you exactly how it is. And uh, when the guy walks in the room, he commands the whole room. He's he's a big time motivator, and uh, there's no BS about him. Do you think you would stand? I know you got 22 and a half sacks, <laughs> it's a lot, but you get to watch film on those people. My past set pretty well documented. You know what is what is the style of tackle that gives you the most problems? You think is it the incredi incredibly stocky, athletic, strong tackle, or is it those with a little bit longer arms than maybe me? I don't know why I would uh, give you that type of information. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I, don't, I don't think I'd have any problems with you, though. What's that all about? Oh. What's that all about? Was that, we're going to ball out quick, bro. Don't you fucking worry about it. All right, that's, the problem. That, that's the most frustrating thing in those quarterbacks to get the ball out in two seconds now. It's, it's ridiculous how quickly um, and decisively they can get the ball out. So do you know that going in, and is that is why sometimes you're squatting, it feels like waiting for the patented Watt swat? Is Because that has been added, I think, to the repertoire a lot more. Has that been something you had to work on, or is that just natural instinct feel? I think it's just natural instincts feel, kind of knowing the situation. There's so many situations within the situation uh, we always talk about. Um, just to kind of know uh, if the ball is coming out quick, if it's towards the sideline, stuff like that. Situations are situational too, TJ. You know what I mean? Mm. In situational ball, of course. Yeah, of course, because there's situations within a situation, and situations are situational in situational ball, even more so. I mean, I've never heard it said better. You deserve the MVP just for that, if I had to guess. Go ahead, Connor. Yeah, TJ, we saw you score a touchdown against the Chiefs. In your exit meeting with Coach Tomlin, did you tell him, hey, look, my older brother can catch the ball in the end zone? So can I. Can we get some sets, maybe two to three packages of me and Derek in the backfield, maybe leaking out to the flat, or are you just focused on defense? I did not. Maybe during OTAs we can draw up something where, See? Uh, where I where I uh, cut the the D end and Derek gets out in the flat or vice versa. A little Watt tag team out what? there. Man. How is it having your brother on a team? I mean, here's another season done. Obviously, it's nice to have some. I mean, you guys dress exactly the fucking same for every travel thing. It's very very <laughs> interesting. I see it on the IG stories. But what is it like? Is it nice to know that? Does he ever say like, "Hey, you remember when you did this? You should try that." Like, what are the conversations like with Derek on the day to day? Oh, it's been cool, man. I mean, 
I always pick him up. I drive to the airport on away games, and uh, every time he gets in the car, we all look. We both look at each other. Are you freaking kidding me, man? You are blue lemon pants. Button. But uh, today, I, I, he lives in my neighborhood, so today I was just driving home from the facility, and uh, he looks like he's about to get on the back of a snowmobile just to just to stink and shovel his driveway. It's pretty ridiculous the amount of winter gear he has on, just to shovel. His- oh. It's fun to have those little interactions with him, and um, it's it's very surreal to uh, be able to share all the experiences here and have someone to talk to that I grew up with um, just about life in the NFL. It's pretty cool. You're saying he's soft. I just heard there. Wow. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> he, he took offense to it. I sent. I took a picture, sent it to the group chat, and said, don't let this guy get on a snowmobile or shovel in his driveway. <laughs> ah, classic, classic. All right, you're obviously up for defensive MVP. 22 and a half sacks is a record holder tied, obviously. You did it in the 17th game, so that will always be a conversation. But only a couple people in the history, you being one of them, have accomplished such a thing. The defensive MVP and those types of conversations, they're going to be held against you forever in the legacy conversation. And obviously your brother has a few of them, and it's an individual award, and you just said it's a team award. But how much do you think about those types of things during the season? And right now, do you hate or love the fact that you're a part of it all? Uh, I mean, after the fact, it's it's fun to be a part of it. But in the season, you don't really have time to think about it. Uh, I told people, my early in my career, I used to always set individual goals. I want to have 20 sacks. I want to have X amount of TFLs, batted passes, all that stuff. And uh, lately, I just found it's better to just kind of have the game record mentality um, as a goal instead because I was putting too much pressure on myself. You're sitting there at week three, and you only have one sack. You have no sacks. And um, you're trying to reach and get out of gaps and do a whole bunch of crazy individualistic stuff, and it doesn't help your football team at all. So I've gotten away from all that. I want to be defensive player of the year. I just want to be uh, the best player I can be week in and week out. And also never dress like a soft ass when you're shoveling your driveway. Mm-hmm. Correct. I'm going to go out here in shorts and a T-shirt and shovel my driveway. So. Hey, are we getting in the lake this uh, off season or not? Are we getting in the frozen lake this off season? I don't know. That happens at Jage's house, so if he lets us, maybe. I don't, I don't, we got to get a sauna ready because that was that was freaking cold, man. Oh, you sound a little soft right there. Oh. <laughs> I guess I am contradicting. <laughs> <laughs> Last question here from Tone. Go ahead. Uh, TJ, you talked about – potentially be in sevens last season and you and Cam stepping up as the leaders. Um, what was it like? Like, what was that last home game at Heinz for seven? Like, how? what was the locker room like after that? Like, how cool was that as a situation? Yeah, it was a playoff-type atmosphere. It was uh, one of the best atmospheres I've been a part of in the NFL. Um, just to be able to have all the fans uh, stay afterwards and have him – Go around and give everyone high fives in the lower bowl was was awesome, and uh, I think he deserves that after everything he's done for uh, the city of Pittsburgh. Brought two Super Bowls, and uh, in the locker room, he gave a nice little speech to us, just thanking us, and um, just very appreciative for all that he's done and all that we've been able to give him this season. And obviously, we weren't able to get the end job done, um, but I'm very appreciative for the the five years I had with him. So does Tomlin send you a text and be like, hey, TJ, what quarterback what? would you want to have next year for a team you're a part of? Or are, are no. those – no. No, I wish, but no, no. <laughs> oh, you do wish. Oh. Who would you say? <laughs> uh, no, I'm not going there. No, 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 come on. <laughs> hey, that's a part of it. You get into that position, that, that becomes a part I don't of it. wish. I take my wish back. <laughs> uh, well, we wish you nothing but success in the future, and we appreciate the hell out of your time here. Thank you for making time on this Monday. Did you watch all the games this past weekend? What, were, what was your big takeaway? What a fucking weekend of football. Yeah, I did. It was crazy, man. Got to have uh, the, the field goal kickers were definitely the stars of the show, other than the quarterbacks just being able to get the ball down the field as quick as possible. But uh, what did you think about the last uh, – you squibbed that last one or not? No, so I hate the squib because I think it's too quick. You know, and with the athletes that you have in the NFL, like even big guys can handle a squib. But I do think you keep that one in bounds. And if you heard McDermott, he said it was an execution thing. I think they were trying to do that. And he might have hit it a little bit far. What are your thoughts? Do you get into the whole strategic game? Is that is that something you enjoy? Yeah. I mean, I'm not big in analytics or anything like that. I, I listen to it if guys are willing to tell me uh, analytically stuff. But I mean, I wouldn't have hated the sky kick and at least put it in bounds and make them make a decision. Um, I think it's tough once you have 13 seconds on the clock. They were trying to uh, not let any guys get over the top of them, but as you can see, the undercover 
the underneath coverage wasn't as great either. But Hey, two timeouts. What are you saying immediately going out there? Is somebody on the field saying, hey, they have two timeouts. So even if we picket fence the out of bounds, which it looked like Buffalo was doing there, which I don't know. Is that communicated on the field, coach, player? Are you reminding yourself at all times and reminding everybody of the situation or is it just expected at this point? Oh, for sure. I think, I mean, you practice it all training camp too. When you go out there, you know, two timeouts, 13 seconds. I mean, they don't have to throw the ball out of bounds um, or anywhere near the out of bounds. So uh, that eliminates some routes that they could be running. What do you think about the overtime rules? Huh? A bunch of bullshit, you ask me. But I've heard uh, defensive players say, well, you got to get a stop. You just got to get a stop, and it's not a problem. Yeah, you, you take the ball. It's disrespectful. Obviously, they're going to take the ball, but uh, it's our job to stop you or keep you to a field goal, and then we trust their offense. So um, I don't have a problem with it. You gonna be out the Super Bowl? Probably winning awards. You gonna be out there? Uh, I haven't decided yet. Oh, well, we'd be honored if you were to go out there and do your thing to stop by and say what's up. All right, if I am, I will. That sounds like no, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> potential defensive MVP, Pittsburgh Steeler icon already, TJ Watt. Thank, Thank you, TJ. Enjoy your day, Bob. Yeah. He ain't coming. Yeah. <laughs> no.